There are literally thousands of imperfect choices for mechanical keyboards out there, and you can customize them a little. Add some O-rings here, change some keycaps there, Luke actually did a guide. Welcome to the ultimate mechanical keyboard guide. But unless you have the know-how to actually build one yourself, you're at the mercy of those that do. Or are you? What if I told you it didn't have to be like that? What if I told you that there are more options out there than you might have realized? What if I told you that today's video is brought to you by iFixit? iFixit's ProTech Toolkit gives you the tools you need to tackle any electronics repair challenge. Visit iFixit.com forward slash Linus at the link below and get yours today. Do you want to build a keyboard? Use any switches that you like. It could be... Uh, uh. All right, so let's go over what we set out to accomplish here because when Anthony first came to me with this idea, he had like these grand visions of programming microcontrollers and soldering diodes using 3D printed or laser cut chassis and a bunch of other things that are really cool, but uh, this is our first rodeo. So we decided to focus on getting one working first. So with that in mind then, we narrowed our search to parts that can bolt together relatively easily. Meaning though, that we can expect to pay a premium. Looking at what's available, there's a lot of 10 keyless components out there, but then even more options for the smaller and simpler 60% layout. So we settled on that, starting at mechanicalkeyboards.com for some essential supplies. Cherry MX Brown RGB key switches, three choices of beautiful anodized aluminum cases to put everything into, and then a selection of springs that we can use to actually customize the feel of our switches. So this way, we could make the caps lock key or the function key more difficult to press accidentally, and then we could even reduce the actuation force of keys like WASD, or even the whole alphanumeric set to improve our speed while maintaining that satisfying tactile bump of the Cherry MX Brown. Like the beauty here, whoop, is that the sky is the limit for customizability. But while it's really fun to play around with a bag full of Cherry MXs, a chassis and a bag of key switches a keyboard does not make. So we are going to need to wire them up. Now, some folks do this manually, but a PCB preferably one that is well documented, is much easier, not to mention a lot tidier. Now, there are swaths of options out there, but for our project, we turned to Banggood, where we found not only this nice wooden case, actually, this thing's really nice, and wrist rest, but also Satan. No, seriously, we found the Satan GH60, a fully programmable keyboard PCB that seems to check all the essential boxes. It's got macro support, an RGB variant, and it is widely used in the DIY community as a budget option. So, with the power of Satan and a plate to go over it, we started to, right. I said no soldering for this video. So we, we just really wanted to make that Satan joke. So maybe we'll do a follow up later with the Dark Prince GH60. Anyway, after some more digging for a plug and play option, we found this on a store called KBD Fans. The Geek Customized GK64 from Semitech. This PCB is pre-built with hot swap terminals. So not only will we not need to solder anything ourselves, we can much more easily pull our key switches if we want to adjust the springs or replace them all together. And it gets bonus points for using a detachable USB type C connection and having multiple RGB modes, including, check this out you guys, this lit AF sound activated mode courtesy of a little microphone built into the keyboard. Cool, right? Uh, before you ask, that microphone can't be used for sound input and for good reason. I mean, imagine your clan mates if you put your headset microphone right next to your Cherry MX Blues, right? Anyway, so while we were talking to Wei over at KBD Fans, we also requested his stylish Tina chassis a full set of keycaps and stabilizers and another plate to fit our GK64, which finally completes then our component checklist. Oh, and we also got these, which 
I caught Anthony working on, um, and he assured me was productive, but I will let you guys be the judge. All that's left now is to put it together and see how well it works. Um, okay, so let's assemble this thing. Um, so we start with what, screwing down the PCB? Yes. That was relatively straightforward. So spacebar. Um, where's the hole? I can't do this. So that seems to go on that way. Mm -hmm. Put the doodad on the doodad. Cool. This is fun. All good in hood. But it doesn't even sit like evenly, like it's bowed up in the middle. So you're sure it wouldn't be faster to clip these into here and then put the whole thing down? Hmm. Yeah, it's probably better to do that. But, okay. Uh, Wait, but there's some, no, issues. there's some wiggle room. Yeah, exactly. I had oh. Yeah, if we run out of Yeah, them, here, can, let's, grab a, let's grab a stiffer one for the space bar. Stiffer one? Yeah. Like how much? <laughs> like a much stiffer one. Okay, well here's 180 grams. Cool. Let's try that. Ooh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's try it. Oh, I don't think I recommend it. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, it's, it's like a typewriter. Yeah, it feels like it's pushing you away from the table. Okay, progress. Let's do a quick light up test. Hey, not bad. Huh, all right. So now we can put all the keycaps on. Oh, these aren't labeled. Or are they? Well, backspace isn't working. O isn't working. How concerned out of 10 should we be on that, about that? There we go. And that is one bent ass pin right there. <laughs> bent right over. Yeah, I would recommend buying some extras if you're gonna undertake a project like this. So everything is tested. Uh, all in all, I'd say that 60% is gonna take some getting used to. You got a super short shift over here. Your delete key is way down here. Um, you don't have function keys, obviously, but overall, I'm pretty pleased with the, with the end product here. It's compact, it's programmable, it's super portable. Uh, we don't have the ability to RGB sync it with, you know, Asus Aura or Razer Synapse or anything, but we could change out its case anytime we wanted. We can make adjustments to the force of the individual keys. I mean, it's fantastic. So you might be sitting there thinking, gee, that sounds great, Linus. Does that mean I should do it too? Well, that really depends on how much you value your time and how much you value your money. Not only did this involve about an hour's worth of work, not counting all the research of finding all the parts and ordering them, our bolt together approach means that our total cost topped 350 US dollars before shipping or taxes. I mean, many people already balk at the idea of a $100 keyboard, so this is clearly a deep rabbit hole for the amateur. The more adventurous among us could salvage from old keyboards or even build or 3D print their own cases, but there will always be caveats no matter who you are. You won't get a warranty by going totally custom. So if you care about that, so in the end then, while this may not be, hands down, the best mechanical keyboard ever, certainly not for the price, nor was it quite as down and dirty DIY as it could have been, it's uniquely ours, and for some people, that's gonna be worth it. So let us know, would you build your own keyboard? In the comments below, and let us know if you'd like to see more DIY keyboard stuff in the future. Maybe next time I'll even let Anthony at the soldering iron. Blue Apron is perfect for those of you out there trying to keep to your New Year's resolutions, especially if they were eating healthier and cooking at home. Blue Apron allows you to create delicious chef-inspired recipes at home by delivering all the farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions. No waste and no trips to the grocery store. They offer two types of plans, the two-person plan and the family plan, and there are eight recipes to choose from each week now instead of six, so you can pick any combination you'd like. 
and they're always adding new dishes to the menu. Blue Apron recipes are delivered in a refrigerated box so the ingredients will stay fresh even if you're not at home and they ship to most of the USA. There's no commitment, you can skip or cancel the service at any time and prices start as low as $8.99 per serving. Check it out at the link in the video description and the first 100 people to sign up will get 30 bucks off their first Blue Apron order. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. At 350 bucks, this is expensive, but like, listen to this thing. You could kill a man.